Awesome. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a fantastic Friday out there today. Uh, my name is Audra, and we're going to be going through how to create your very own digital portfolio using Spark Pages today. So thank you for joining us here uh, this morning. And before we get started, have you used Creative Cloud before? Um, if you have not, you're going to want to definitely check out these links here. And again, the access to our presentation and therefore all of those links is in the chat as well. Um, I'll go ahead and copy and paste that just one more time so then we can all have access to that. Um, and then once you have access to that, you'll have access to some of these links as well. So including the Adobe student link here, um, as well as the Adobe faculty link. So if you have not signed up for an account before, go ahead and check out one of those two. And then once you have signed up, go to spark adobe.com um, again the link is in the chat um, and you should be able to access it from there just input your asu right email again your asu right not any aliases that you might be using otherwise um, and then just follow your single sign-on process like usual select your company or school account while logging in and again everything we're going to be doing today is going to be all located at spark.adobe.com. So if you do have any questions as we're going through, if you can't access your account or anything like that, please go ahead and post in the chat. We'll try to take care of it as we go. So hello, my name's Audra. It's wonderful to see you guys out here today. Um, I am a designer, maker, talker, and teacher, and most importantly, a learning experience designer here in the University Technology Office here at ASU. And I also am an ASU grad myself. So I graduated with my bachelor's degree in arts, media, and engineering, um, and I'm finishing up my master's degree in learning design technologies right now. So talking about portfolios today, this is something that has come into play very much so in my own experience as a graduate, as a uh, member of our, our you know, faculty team here at ASU Faculty Support. Um, so this is a really important skill for all of us to be learning, whether you're creating one for yourself, creating uh, portfolios with your students, any number of different ways that you could be using portfolios. It's a great opportunity for all of us today. So to kind of give you an overview of what we're going to be covering. So first off, why would you want to be using a digital portfolio? What makes a good one? And then we'll be building something together, hands on, we'll make some stuff. And I'll also be providing some further tips and support resources for you so that when you go off into the wild and create your own, because today we'll get started with ours, but I know that there's a million different projects that you guys are probably involved in. If you want to dig in a little bit deeper, we've got resources for that. So. To get started, why should you actually have a digital portfolio? Well, it's a great question, and digital portfolios ultimately allow you to connect with professors, administrators, other students, and potential employers. So no matter what kind of role you happen to be playing, there's so many different opportunities that a digital portfolio can come in handy for. Also, you can use it to share your work with others. So if you're really excited about something that you've been working on, it's a great opportunity to show other people how excited you are about it. This is also a great space to demonstrate your skills to future teammates, reviewers, or educational programs. So if you're applying for a job, you're applying for a future position in a graduate program, um, or even if you're just interested in sharing this with other people that you might be a mentor to, um, there's a bunch of different ways that you can show, here's all of the things that I've got in my wheelhouse. You can also document the details of projects that you've been part of. So lots of the time, we, we spend a lot of time talking about just the final product, but the process is really important too. So in progress is always a helpful thing to have in there as well. And it also allows you to reflect on coursework that you've completed for your degree program. So especially if we're looking at, for example, first year composition programs, a lot of our first year composition, English 101, 102, 105, a lot of these courses use digital programs um, for portfolio creation so that students can kind of take a look at, wow, I started here and I ended up here. So lots of different opportunities for portfolios to come in handy. So 
The big thing is that your portfolio is an opportunity to make a really great first impression. So imagine digitally, you're looking at someone from across the room and you're able to say, okay, yeah, that person looks awesome. I'm very excited to talk to them, very excited to meet with them and very excited to learn about the work that you do. Um, so really to keep in mind, you know, throughout your uh, portfolio creation process is what do you actually want people to know about you and the work that you do? So that kind of begs the question of what should my digital portfolio actually look like? Now, the real answer is that it should be simple, it should be memorable, and it should be appropriate for your field. So there's a lot of different tools that you can use to create this. Today, we're going to be looking at Spark, um, but you can also use things like Instagram to create a portfolio. You can create your own website on a number of different website creators. Uh, you can even print something out and make something, for example, using InDesign um, that you can pass out to people physically too. So there's a lot of different options and what works best really depends on what your industry is and what you're creating. So whatever makes the most sense today, we're going to be looking at Spark because it's a great opportunity to kind of cover a lot of different industries um, in one super simple tool. So now, no matter what your portfolio actually looks like, a couple of the things that we're going to focus on explaining and including in our portfolios today is, first of all, who are you? That's the most important thing that people need to know. Think of this as your social media bio. So you don't want anything that's super in depth. You don't want anything that's super long. As much as I would love to say that everyone is going to read your six paragraph essay about how awesome you are. Unfortunately, a lot of us just don't have the time. So let's try to make it as tight and quick to read as possible. Then also second, what do you actually do? So show us what you do. Don't just tell us. Um, again, as much as I would love to think that we all have the time to read a full essay about something, often we don't. So make sure that you're including images and quick descriptions of what you're doing. Also, how do I get in touch with you? Because really, if I'm seeing here's who you are and here's what you do and I think you'd be a great addition to my team or a great addition to our future cohort for an educational program, for example, or if I'm seeing your work and thinking, wow, I would really love to get to know this person. I really think I could learn from them. Um, it's important that people know how to get in touch with you. So having your social media accounts, for example, um, or an email, professional email uh, linked on here, it really makes it easy for folks to get in touch with you. So once you've kind of figured those things out, now, of course, a portfolio includes projects. That's really what we're here to put in our portfolio, right? Otherwise, it's just a resume. So each project should include a quick overview. So what is your elevator pitch of your project? Keeping it short and sweet is important. Again, we don't all have the time to read all day. Um, project artifacts. So what components did you create to make this happen? So make sure that you're focusing on the things that you got your hands dirty in. And the outcome and reflection. So how did your project actually work out? Don't be afraid to totally gas yourself up. This is your opportunity to tell everyone how awesome you are and the work that you're doing, how great it is. So take that time to show off like, yeah, we nailed this project. It looks beautiful. And I was a huge part of how it, it got off the ground. So now, good digital portfolios are made of the exact same pieces as any good website, so make sure you have a call to action. So what should I actually do once I have seen your work? Skimmable text. So what do I actually need to know about when I am looking through your content? Um, and flexible content. So making sure that it is something that will still work if I chose to look at your content on my phone. So. All of that being said, the beautiful thing about working with Spark is that all of these functions are really easy to incorporate and everything that you create in Spark is really easy to look at on a phone um, or even if you export it into a like a printable portfolio, it still will create a fantastic product. So you've got a lot of really great options when working with Spark. On top of that, you do want to make sure you're adding links to your portfolio in, for example, your iSearch profile, if you are a faculty member here, uh, your LinkedIn or professional Twitter, for example, so any professional social media accounts that you might have. 
You also will want to include links to your professional social media accounts, vice versa, on your portfolio page. So again, part of your contact info so that you've kind of got a, a whole ecosystem going here. So if people find you on LinkedIn first, then they can see your portfolio, or if they find your portfolio first, they can connect with you on LinkedIn, making sure that you've got that full circle going. Now, a couple other tips before we start digging into making our own. So. Number one thing when creating a portfolio is that you want it to be unique. So sometimes you might be at an intersection between a couple of different disciplines. I know that that's where I've been. Um, so what you want to do is make sure you're positioning all of the work that you have done to a diverse audience, right? So taking a closer look at some of the desired qualifications for listings. So whether it's a graduate program and they're really looking for people with for example, uh, qualitative research experience. So really focusing on any qualitative research experience you might have. Um, also, if you're looking at a job description, if they're looking for graphic design talent or specific work with uh, various programs, make sure you're including that information, right? So find those buzzwords, use them to and illustrate those qualities that you can, you can find in those, uh, those job descriptions. Now, the other thing too, is that you can create a couple of different collections of your work to fit the different kinds of positions that you might be applying for. So what that means, well, really, you wanna make sure that recruiters, no matter who they are, are going to see why you're the perfect fit for the job. So we've got an example here. So Jean uh, recently graduated with their master's in sustainability. And so they're thinking about applying to listings for a local government position a science educator position and a researcher position. So all of these are a little bit different, really pulls on all of their knowledge base, but at the same time, they have some slightly different responsibilities day to day, right? So while their work actually fits each of these jobs, each recruiter for each of those jobs is going to have a little bit of a different opinion of what they'd like to see in their portfolio, right? So when we're saying creating a few different collections the beautiful thing about spark again is that it's super flexible and you can actually duplicate pages really easily so if you're interested in making one page that's going to go out exclusively to those jobs like for example um research and education positions versus um something that you might be sending to government positions uh, that's totally possible and you don't have to start from scratch you can basically just copy paste everything over and edit accordingly so second big thing to remember is that you want to seek out feedback i know it is very scary to put yourself out there and say hey i have created this whole thing that shows off how awesome i am please tell me i'm awesome too <laughs> <laughs> it is a very vulnerable space to be in, but making sure you're reaching out to your friends, your colleagues, any other professionals that you might be working with, so professors, for example, just so that you can get further feedback on your portfolio. This allows you to get some other perspectives and help you to see some things that you might not otherwise notice. On top of that, you do want to be taking some photos and videos as you're doing fun stuff, right? So while you're in progress, in the field, in a meeting, doing fun things as part of your job, as part of your education, make sure you're taking those photos. I know that I've got my smartphone in my pocket at basically all times. So it's something that I try to remind myself to do from time to time. But also adding personalized visual interest to your portfolio is really the key here, right? So you can learn a little bit more about how to take quality photos with your smartphone and quality video with your smartphone. Again, these links are in our presentation, which is in the chat. If you do need links to that, um, we'll be reposting those shortly as well. Um, but the great thing here is that you already have a device likely with you at all times that will allow you to make some really great recordings. So the difference between screwing around and science is writing it down, a fantastic quote from Adam Savage, and a very true note. So remember, if you are working on a really in-depth project and you're forgetting to take photos, you're not necessarily going to remember that process of getting to the end point, right? So take those photos, take some notes, take some videos of do, doing fun stuff. Um, it's going to help you in the long run, give you some more fodder to play with as well. Um, and again, coming back to Jean. So Jean was at a conference and now at this point a couple of years ago because of COVID, but Hopefully there, there will be some new conferences coming up soon. Um, and they made some really, really great connections while out there. They also documented the week using their phone. 
Now, some of the photos and pictures that they took were really great. And so the portfolio section about the paper that they presented at this conference turned out awesome. Uh, they were able to take some pictures of you know, their, their uh, poster session, all kinds of fun stuff like that. So opportunities will show up in your life where you can find some really great ways to take some photos, take some videos, make it look really interesting just for yourself. Now, those are all the tips and tricks on how to get started. So let's actually build something together. So now just to kind of give you a picture of what Jean's presentation looks like. So this is Jean's website, right? So we've got a really beautiful header here. Um, we've got this really fantastic just scroll through opportunity. And again, we're kind of focusing on, all right, first thing here, my name's Jean. I'm a sustainability professional. Awesome. I know exactly what they're trying to communicate to me right off the bat. It looks beautiful. I've got some really beautiful photographs um, and information about different uh, projects that they have been involved in. And I can scroll through here really quickly, but I'm still feeling really engaged. I can see exactly how their work really connects to the work that they have been doing in their degree program and the things that they're interested in doing in the future. So, and of course I get down to the bottom here and I've got opportunities to connect. So awesome. Again, going back to those couple of things that we covered, we've got a call to action. We've got let's connect. We've got a couple of different ways to get in touch. Um, we have a bunch of different illustrations of different projects that this person has put together. And we have a quick description of who they are. So I can read this in maybe 30 seconds maximum, right? Um, it makes it super easy to understand exactly what they're trying to do with their professional career. Awesome. This is a great portfolio. Now, if we actually want to dig into the weeds and start making one ourselves, let's do it together. So uh, first things first, you're going to go to spark.adobe.com. Um, this is a super easy website to work with. You have a bunch of different things to kind of play around with here. But today, first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go over here and I am going to click the plus sign and select a web page. So this is going to open up a brand new web page for me. So awesome. I'm already getting started. I've already got a website kind of going. I don't even need to do any work to create some sort of header or anything like that. It's already pre-created for me. I just need to put in the information. So for example, my title, I think I'm going to just say, my name is Audra Lee Carlisle. Awesome. And I don't, I don't know how I feel about this font. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and check out the themes option up here in the right. Now, because we are students uh, and faculty here at ASU, we have access to a number of really great themes that aren't available to people using just the free version of Spark, which is great. So if you want to try out a bunch of different themes, you have some really great resources available. Uh, for me, I think I like... I like the chic theme, so I think I'm going to go with this one. Yeah, that looks good. So I've got this here, and I'm going to add a subtitle. So um, I also have my other portfolio pulled up over here. So I've got some information that I can pull from just over here that I've already written out. Now, if you have content that you have written out, awesome. Um, if you don't, this is a super easy thing to kind of play around with, right? So. I'm going to select this because I think this is a good little tagline to have here. So I'm going to add this right there. Awesome. And because I feel like that describes me, you, you've got a very quick understanding of, okay, who is this person? Um, what are they interested in doing? And again, coming back to those kind of tips and tricks, really thinking about how do we make this a communicative experience as quickly as possible, right? So um, I'm also going to add a photo here. So this background photo, I've got this little photo option here. Um, I'm, I can select all kinds of different options here. So um, I can find free photos using a number of different public uh, access websites with open resource photos available to me. Um, you can use Adobe Stock, though, a head, heads up. Um, at ASU students, we're working on this, but essentially in order to use Adobe Stock, you do need to log out of your ASU account, download the content that you want to use, and then re-upload that. Um, it's because of some interesting little details with our enterprise license, um, but it is something that is available to you for free. You just have to log out first. 
Um, you can also pull things directly from Creative Cloud. So for example, if you've been working on some really cool project in Photoshop, you can pull that in directly from your Creative Cloud account. Lightroom, same sort of thing. So if you've been working on a really beautiful uh, portrait photo, for example, you can pull that in from here. Connect it to Dropbox. So if you have anything in Dropbox, you can use that as well. Same thing with Google Photos and Google Drive. So any number of different ways to include stuff. But for today, we're just going to use the Find Free Photos tool here. Um, and let's see, I'm going to look up Arizona because that's where I'm from. It, it makes enough sense. All right. I like this uh, this photo of Horseshoe Bend, but I kind of like this one of the narrows here. This is really pretty. So and I'm I'm also from Utah, Arizona, so kind of between the two. So this is a great background for me. So cool. OK, so I like my background here. And if I start scrolling down, as you can see here, we have a bunch of different tools to include here. Now, one of the quirky things about working with Spark pages is that if you do create something, uh, you can't necessarily just drag it around in your um, your composition, so to speak. So if you're interested in kind of just trying to slap stuff on there and see how it goes, awesome. Um, if you're interested in building things out uh, ahead of time with kind of a map and then seeing, okay, I like that, but I, I'm not going to put information in here just yet because I might want to move it around, that's an option too. So that's how I'm going to start out, um, just kind of adding some things in, seeing how I feel about that layout, and then going back and adding in my information once I've decided I like that layout for myself. So first things first, I think I'm going to add a split layout here. Um, so this split layout allows you to add an image and some text components on the other side. You can also switch which direction those are in. So for example, if I wanted to add an image, um, let's add an image that I actually have. I've got some headshots that I've got. So if I go to my desktop photo, I've got some portfolio materials here. Um, let's see, I've got, yeah, this is a pretty good headshot. This is me yesterday. Beautiful, that's me. Awesome, so now I'm gonna add a description about myself. So as you can see, just over here on the right, I've got a couple of different options to add in here. So I can add a secondary photo if I wanted to. I can add text, I can add a button or a whole video, which is pretty awesome. So if you've worked with any other video editing software, you can upload a video manually to here or pull something in from YouTube, Vimeo, any number of different hosting sites. But for right now, I'm just going to add some text and say, hello, my name is Audra. And so I want this to appear as a title for myself, right? So as you can see here, we have a bunch of text editing options. Um, I'm going to just make this a, a header one um, so that it shows up as big at the top of my page as possible. But also for those who are using screen readers, this is a, a main point on my page. So as they're kind of tabbing through, um, they'll be able to see, okay, this is a main point before reading some more information after it. You could also make it a header two if you're interested in um, having another header one above it and then having some independent sections below that. That works too. Um, for me right now, I'm going to use header one. Um, and then I can input some further information down here. So you now I've got all of this handy dandy information um, just in a little Word document over here on the other side of my screen. So again, if you're spending that time ahead of time to kind of write out your kind of quick pitch about yourself, your, your social media bio, um, your skills, your education information, all of that fun stuff, um, it's always handy to have that written down. So I'm just going to paste that in here. Um, so I'm going to change this title here. Awesome. So now I've got some information about myself. Awesome. I've got some really uh, in-depth details and I feel like I can read this pretty quickly and understand what I would be trying to do. So if I'm another person outside of myself trying to determine uh, what whether I would be a good fit for my team, um, I would like to think so. <laughs> but you, you get a really quick and in-depth idea of exactly what I do. So now awesome. So I've got this really great kind of pitch like here's me and now scrolling down a little bit further we've got all of these other options here. So for example, let's add a photo grid. So if I wanted to add a couple of different photos of a project, for example, 
Um, we can add some more photos. Um, in this case, I don't have any project photos, but I can find a couple of stock photos. So that's also a great option. So for example, if you are creating a portfolio for the very first time, or maybe you were writing a paper for the majority of the time that you're, you're working on a project here, um, and maybe you don't have any really fun photos, you can always find some photos that would be really engaging and um, fun to work with and tied thematically to the content that you're building. So since I do a lot of work with education and design, I'm going to just look up education, see what photos come up. Okay, some of these are some kind of nice like book photos and stuff. Um, I like this one. This one's pretty good. That's pretty close to a lot of the work that I do. Um, let's look up design as well. This is pretty accurate. That's mostly what my desk looks like most days. <laughs> <laughs> as long as I've got my life together enough to organize things. Um, and let's see, I think let's go to teaching. See if there's any photos that'll come up here. It'll be helpful. Hmm. This is always the joy of using stock photos. You never know what's going to show up. Sometimes it's helpful and shows you exactly what you're looking for. And sometimes it's not quite what you're searching for. So let's see what comes up with teacher. Yeah, okay, this is pretty solid. It's not me, but that's okay. For the purpose of today's demonstration, I think that's a good example. So, okay, so we've got a couple of photos here. And what's really great is that you can kind of change up your, your composition here. So for example, if I want this photo to be bigger than the rest of them, I can make all of these ones smaller. If I want to move things around, um, there's these little arrow buttons here that I can kind of move so that I've got different options of compositions here that I can kind of work with. Um, I can also, for example, hmm, I've decided I'm not really sure I want to work with this photo, but I like where it's positioned. I like how this is working. You can also just replace the photo instead. So that's also helpful. Um, so if I go to replace, then I can select an alternative photo. Um, let's go for something like this one. So classroom teacher sort of thing. Okay, cool. So now it's replaced my photo. It's kind of automatically cropped it so it looks nice. Um, I've got all kinds of really great options here. Let's see if I can. Yeah, I kind of like this grid option that I'm working with here. So let's let's roll with that. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to save my composition here. It'll go. There we go. And now, as you can kind of see here, all right, so I've got my header option here. I've got myself here um, and my, my quick pitch of who I am. I've got this really great little photo grid that includes some of the work that I do. Um, and then, so again, scrolling down, I've got even more options to include here. So if I wanted to include a glide show, for example, one of my favorite tools available in Spark Pages, um, you can add all kinds of really beautiful images um, and include information um, about them on top of them. So let's see if I can find some other fun photos. So I'm going to look up a mountain because mountains are always beautiful. I'm from Salt Lake City, but also on top of that, I think education is always a really good mountain metaphor. Finding, again, some of those like metaphorical images that you can kind of play with, right? So I really like this photo. This one's really pretty. Um, and then let's see, something like this would be really nice. So imagining I'm, I'm just talking about education on top of these things. So, okay, so just for the sake of time, we'll, uh, we'll just write some stuff on top of these. So again, because I have uh, my information just kind of over here on my left-hand side, um, I can include the information about me on top of each of these. So for example, I'm just gonna copy paste this. This will be a more in-depth about me section. This can include some uh, details about me. And again, I can go in here and uh, change my headers. Or for example, if I had a really compelling quote, um, either from me or from someone that I found really inspiring, I could make it a quote block as well. I can add uh, things like bullet points or numbers. 
Um, I can, you know, do the average uh, bold and italic and, and add some links in here. And great question in the chat. Do you know if these pages are accessible by screen readers? So to some extent, yes, there are a couple of things that we do need to create some workarounds for. So for example, um, in this case, so this image, um, there's not really a way for us to add in um, alt text, for example. So this image is just automatically going to be designated as a descriptive or uh, just decorative image, right? So also with our uh, like image grid, for example, you can add captions here. So um, this is where I'd put my alt text. So for example, if you're adding alternative text to images, that's something that you do kind of have to think around it, right? Now, in terms of just the, the content written out, so for example, this is tagged as a header and these are tagged as body paragraphs, these are readable by screen readers. So no need to worry about students not having access to these if they do need to use a screen reader. But um, that all being said, this is something that uh, we have brought up with the Spark admins as well. Um, and in the next year or so, they're hoping to roll out a better alt text creation option um, and a couple of different options for, for making sure that everything is accessible to all kinds of folks that might be using the program. So as you can see, my favorite thing about Glide Shows, you've got this really beautiful, compelling image here. And then you've got this really great uh, option for text information to show up on top of it, right? So what's also great, I can kind of drag this around. So if I want it to be right in the middle, I can look at it that way. I can add it over to the side here. So if I've got a lot of things kind of one after the other, for example, um, I can include that information, but it's not going to be really just uncomfortable to read because it just feels like you're continuously reading the same thing over and over again. You can make it feel very compelling and exciting to look at, right? So I've got my information here. <clears throat> I'm interested in adding some more information right here. So. For example, um, I want to include my education and skills. So I can just copy these and add them in right here. Ta-da, easy peasy. Now, the unfortunate thing is that if you, for example, already have something in a um, bulleted list, for example, or something along those lines, or if you've got things broken up by line breaks, line breaks currently are not available within uh, something on Adobe Spark pages. Now, that again is something that is in the feature request. So it is something that will be updated in the near future. But so for example, let's say you've got a bunch of things that are uh, in a, a bulleted list right now, you will need to go in and manually change that. So for example, like this, and then once you do that, way easier to add everything in here. So as you can see, but um, that being said, yeah, it's it can get to be a little tedious if you copy paste everything in that way. So some things to keep an eye out for, right? So before I spend too, too much time just deleting things here, um, you can also, do, 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 add things like just individual photos, individual text boxes. So for example, if I wanted to add a quote here, um, let's see. Do, do, do. I've got a quote right here, perfect. So I can just paste this in here. So beautiful kind of highlighted block quotes, for example. Um, call out post components as well. Uh, and like I said, you can include things like videos as well. So for example, if I wanted to embed something from YouTube, um, I could do that. You can also embed things directly from Spark Video as well. Uh, so if, for example, you're using this with students, you're an instructor, um, you're using Spark Video for one project in your course, and this is your final portfolio project, you wanna include your video in here, easy peasy, you can just do that right there, uh, just using a URL. So for example, um, of course, I forgot to get my YouTube video. Oh, goodness. Let's see if I can pull that out real quick. Do -do -do. 
YouTube. Oh, perfect. I love it when I've got things in an easy enough spot. Okay. So for example, if I wanted to include this other training that I had, I've got this YouTube link here. I can click save and it embeds directly within the page, which is great. So uh, students, for example, if they have created a video, you can have that embedded naturally. Um, you can also, for example, if you have YouTube videos of content that you have created. So in this case, that's exactly what I'm doing here. Um, you can include that directly within the page instead of having to just link them out elsewhere. So now let's say I wanted to add just like a little break in the page. Um, let's add a photo. So again, I'm liking these mountain photos. These are really pretty. I kind of like the sky here. So there's a bunch of different options for individual images that you can work with as well. So if, for example, I wanted it just as kind of a, a marquee image, I can do that. I can also fill the screen and add a caption here. So kind of similar to what the glide show does. Um, I can create a window so that as I scroll past it, I just look at, at this image through the window. I can also make it full width, um, which doesn't necessarily show the full image all in one screen, kind of like the, uh, like the fill screen option, but it makes it so that I can kind of scroll past it. Um, I can also move exactly where my um, where my photo is on my page. So this is the one opportunity that you have to where you can kind of move things throughout your pages. Um, Adobe has really focused really heavily on how you can move individual images on their work. So I can move just that composition. I can replace the image if I wanted to. And of course I can delete it if I need to. Um, but I'm gonna make this a window so that when you scroll past it, looks real nice. So kind of as I'm scrolling here, I've got this really great little composition here. Now I've got this beautiful little window image down here. So now let's say I want people to get in contact with me again, including those contact resources available as well. Um, I think I'm going to do another split layout just so then I've got that same sort of composition is where people first see my information up here. Um, so but this time I think I'm going to switch the sides of my image and my information. So I'm going to switch sides of that. Doo -doo -doo. Oh goodness, where'd it go? There we go. Now I'm going to add my image. And in this case, I think I've got another headshot that I can include here. Yep, here's a good one where it's just me laughing. And then I can include, let's get in touch. Or my personal favorite actually saying, uh, send me a carrier pigeon. Awesome. Okay, and again, I'm going to just make this a header section so that it automatically, if I am using a screen reader, it'll show that this is a header section that I need to pay attention to. And then let's add in a couple of buttons here. So as we saw here, you've got text, photos, and buttons. So I want to add in this button. Um, and so my button text, let's say I want it to go to my Twitter account. So, and then that allows me to put in my Twitter uh, link. So twitter.com slash this is Audra. That's my username. And now, as you can also see here, you can select your alignment as well. So if you want it to be in the center of your page, you want it to be over to the left or to the right, great. You've got options here. I want it to be in the center. So I think that's a good option there. So perfect. I've got my link here available to take me directly to Twitter. Um, I can also add things like LinkedIn um, or, for example, my instructional design portfolio. So if I wanted to take people to my Google Drive or Project Drive, I think that's going to be a better name so that it communicates exactly what I want people to know about it. I'll say that's in my center section here, and I've got my instructional design folder. I can get a link for this. Copy link. Beautiful. I go back over to my page here. I can add my link in here. Beautiful. Okay, so I've got a couple of links here. So now, as you can see, I'm liking the way that this is looking. 
this isn't perfect, but that's okay. Um, we're not going to be looking at that part. And in fact, what's great is that I can actually just delete this section automatically um, if I want to. So for example, I'm going to edit my photos. I'm going to delete just this section. Awesome. Okay, so I've got my title here. I've got me, a compelling image of me that makes people excited to talk to me, I hope. Um, I've got a quick description of who I am and what I do. I've got some images that show the kinds of projects that I complete. I've got a quick further in-depth description of what I do. Um, you can place any number of different things in this section as well, um, like we were kind of going over here. Jean has, for example, a bunch of project uh, direct links. And then if I go down further, I've got a video here, I've got a compelling quote, and I've got this nice little scroll through image to add some visual interest. And I've got some links to my professional portfolio content and how to get in touch with me, right? So this is looking great. I'm pretty happy with my product right now. So, and as you can see, let's see, it's 1140 right now. And that's how far along we've already gotten. Like, that's crazy. If I, if I had spent a little bit more time writing things out and fine tuning this, I'm sure that this is, this would be the best portfolio. So now, as with any good portfolio, the important thing is that you're able to share it with people, right? So if I go over to my share section here, whoa, why are we doing this? Let's, let's see, why is this having issues? Ah, it's saying that it's saving. I might be having some issues with my egg. So this is actually a really common issue with Spark. Um, so if, for example, your internet connection is acting kind of funky, um, or if your login has expired, for example, if you've been using Spark for the last 12 hours and suddenly your authentication has timed out, sometimes this will happen. But so we're going to pretend for a moment, we're going to go back over to Jean's page here. Um, now, this is what a finalized page is going to look like, right? So if we look at Jean's page, as you can see, I don't have these controls up here. I don't have all of the plus signs and stuff like that to add new information in. Um, so it really just makes it actually look like a finalized website. So, oh, there we go. It has saved. So we're good to go now. So, okay. So if I go up to the share section here, um, if I am interested in sharing my work, because again, that's what a portfolio is for, you have a bunch of different options for sharing. So first thing is you can publish and share a link. So if you're interested in having your name tied to it directly, awesome, you can turn that on. You can also turn that off if you don't want an author tied to it. In this case, since it is my own portfolio on my own website, um, I think I'd like to include my name on here. Um, I can also pick a category. So a lot of the time students in our classes are going to generally be choosing education, but it could be business causes any number of different things. So in my case, because I am an educator and this is for a workshop that we're doing today, I'm going to select education. Um, and then as you can see here also, you have photo credits because we always like to make sure that everyone gets cited in the process. Um, so for example, if I've got some photos that I took myself, or that my friends took for me. Um, I can also add some uh, image credit to them as well. So for example, um, I can add in here, um, headshots by my friend, Andy. So perfect, okay. So we've got all this put together. This is looking great. And now I'm gonna create a link to my page. Now this takes just a second. And then as soon as you have a link, you can submit this to a Canvas assignment, for example. So you would just require your students to have a US, or not a USB, a URL submission. Um, so your students can do that. You can also share this link directly to a number of different resources here. So you can share it directly to Facebook or Twitter or Google Classroom or Teams if you are using any of those sorts of tools. You can also embed things in an email, for example. 
um, or include an embed page. So if you have another website that you're hosting this within, um, you can just embed that directly there. You can also use that embed code to embed these pages directly within your Canvas page. So if you're interested in using Spark pages to create some other uh, assignment walkthroughs, for example, if you're an instructor, um, or if you're interested in creating just project pages about individual projects that you've completed as a student, um, you're interested in using Spark pages as a, as a collation way to present a project instead of your whole uh, your whole portfolio, that's a total possibility as well. Um, then you can just embed that content directly onto another page. So uh, we've got our link here. Now there's a couple other sharing options that are always helpful to know about as well. So if I wanted to print this, for example, so like we said earlier, some situations it would make sense to print it out as a PDF and bring it all along with you. So if I want to print it, for example, um, this will prepare it as a PDF for me that I can just print off, which is great. So as you can kind of see here, um, and everyone can see this, this uh, function box here, correct? This, this printing option. Any thumbs up from the, from the peanut gallery? Thank you, awesome. Um, so as you can see here, it creates this really great PDF layout for me. Um, some of it does require me to kind of go back and see like, okay, I might, I might want to change how this looks, um, or I might, might want to move a little bit of uh, some stuff around to make sure that it all comes together the way I expect it to. Um, but I can do that really easily. That's an option that I can go back and look at. Um, and so options are available to you to, for example, if it is easier for you to print it off and share it with people, that's an option that's available as well. So. Since that's not what I'm doing today, that's all good too. But also, again, if you're an instructor, you're interested in having your students submit these as PDFs instead of as a link directly to the website, that's an option you can go with. You can also send this link directly to Google Drive, which allows you to access it directly from your Google Drive account. And you can invite someone. Now, this is an important thing. If, for example, you are working on a group portfolio, um, or if you're interested in using this for projects or anything like that, um, you can add direct other people to collaborate on this with, which is awesome. Now, again, Spark is not perfect. It does have a couple of little bugs here and there. So one of those things is that you cannot work on Spark simultaneously at the same time like you might be able to with something like Google Docs. It's a perfect option if, for example, this is something that you'll be working on asynchronously over a longer period of time. You can communicate easily with your other uh, collaborators on something like this to make sure that everyone is saving it appropriately um, and not accidentally losing any information. Again, because of those same sorts of things that we were kind of running into a moment ago. Sometimes there's that little bit of lag time before it's able to upload to our servers. So if I wanted to add someone, I could just add their email here. Um, I can also copy a link to share directly with individuals if I don't have their email, for example, or if they're outside of um, my like email list or anything like that, that's an option that I can work with. Now, what's also great too is that if for example, you're interested in using this um, in a boardroom presentation, you're using Spark to create a portfolio presentation that you're interested in sharing directly during your interview. Um, if you are using this to present your portfolio in front of a classroom, any number of presentation options, you can also select present, which pulls it into a slide deck sort of version of working with your content here. So as you can see here, I can slide through this. It looks beautiful. Um, it is just as compelling as a, a slide deck that I might be using on something like Google Drive, um, but I've got all of these beautiful options that are available to me through uh, using something in Adobe Spark, which is awesome. So I've got all these great photos and everything, and it's easy to scroll through. And it looks beautiful. So whether you're using this in a live presentation um, or if you're just sending it along as a website for people to go through on their own time, compelling, exciting, fun, and really, really easy. As you saw, we put this together so darn quickly. And if I spent just a little bit more time fine tuning it, I think that this would be a fantastic uh, portfolio for me to share. 
Now, of course, settings, you do have a couple of other options here. You can turn off your header and footer. Um, so if you don't want people to know, for example, um, on mine, I have it so that it has the UTO logo with everything that I create. Um, I can turn that off, for example. Uh, you can also turn on analytics tracking IDs. So if you are interested in using this with a Google Analytics product and learning more about who is seeing your page, that's an option you can put on here. Um, lots of really great resources available here. And you can make as many different pages as you'd like. So again, so let's say, this is my, my last little bit for you today. So if, for example, I knew that this is a great project that I wanted to work with again, but maybe I wanted to make a couple of edits before I send it to a slightly different employer, I can just duplicate the project and make a couple of little tiny changes to make sure that it is perfect to send along to the next person that I might be sending my applications out to. So you have all kinds of different resources, all kinds of different ways with really presenting your information effectively. Um, and it's, it's ultimately just really fun. Spark is a really great resource to kind of play around with. Now, if I head back over here, now, that being said, there's a bunch of other resources available to us as well. So if you're interested in learning more about effective portfolio creation, um, you can check out Campus Press's digital portfolio guide. They have a bunch of really great in-depth tips and tricks on how to make your portfolio as compelling and fun and interesting as possible. Um, and you can check out our website for official guides on how to use Adobe Creative Cloud projects. So if you're interested in using Spark, awesome but there's a couple of different other portfolio products that are available directly from adobe as well so if you for example are working um, with a really large breadth of different projects you can use adobe behance which is an online portfolio social network space um, you can also check out adobe portfolio which it kind of lends itself naturally to the name as well it's pretty fun to play with um, bunch of really great options that you can kind of uh, see what works best for the kinds of work you do. Uh, but also you can check out all of the other Adobe programs that are available as well. Like we kind of noted here, um, you can pull in all kinds of resources for uh, you know yourself or instructors you work with, any number of different folks um, on how to work with things like InDesign or Illustrator. If you're incorporating other content from Creative Cloud, you can include it directly into your content on Spark, just like that, just the click of a link. And also another good question, do we have instructions, tips, and et cetera for faculty that are interested in implementing this into their class? Yes, we do. We have a bunch of different links that I can post in the chat in just a moment here as well. So all of that being said, that's all we've got in terms of active building stuff for today. If you guys have any questions about anything, um, again, like instructions, tips, and, and details for faculty interested in using this in classes, or if you're interested in asking some, some further questions about how to use Spark for portfolio building, we're happy to answer those. But in the meantime, if you have to go, thank you so much for joining us today. And we're very excited to see you hopefully again next week. Uh, next week, we'll be starting off our series about keeping boredom away. So that'll be super fun. Um, I think next week we have a speaker session with um, Alex Benson, who is a graphic designer, creative director, um, and ASU alumni, who is awesome, really fun guy to, to talk to. He also is part of a couple of really great local bands, including one that uh, you guys might have seen in the news, Okily Dokily. Uh, you, you might want to go and check that one out after this, but we'll hope to see you next Friday. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day and uh, we'll, we'll catch you next time. And okay, so answering questions in the chat, are we going to do an app course again? Miss the last one. We do have a recording of that session, so I can go ahead and send that along to you as well. Um, we, so we're in the process of editing the video for that because we're trying to make sure that all of this stuff is available on YouTube for our larger kind of public community as well um, so that everyone can use these resources. So we'll we'll be posting that on our YouTube channel. Um, let me see if I can grab our YouTube channel link as well so you can just take a look at that, bookmark that, see when there's new content posted on there. And thank you so much, Margaret. I really appreciate it. She's out of here now, but that was so sweet.
and yeah, okay, so now in terms of resources for you, Amy, I've got a couple of different things that I can send along because I know how much of a pain it is when you're starting to use these sorts of tools and you're looking for resources and writing a brand new you know, set of rubrics and instructions and stuff like that, it is a pain in the butt. No one likes to do it. So we've got all kinds of stuff for that. And let me just pull that up real quick. And yeah, Amy, if you don't mind me asking, um, what courses are you, like, if you're, if you're working with faculty, like what kinds of courses are you going to be working with? Hi, Andrea. Oh. Um, so we, I'm the director of the Teaching Learning Center mm -hmm. um, within the School of Life Sciences. Awesome. Okay. So yeah, we're doing mostly life sciences, but I can see some applications and I, I happen to love Adobe products. Awesome. So I'm like, I get you. How can I help them get into this a little easier? Yeah, absolutely. That you have that you think might be good for them would be great. Mm -hmm, for sure. So, um, and you should be able to just download the the chat transcript after this to have all of these links convenient Perfect. to you. But okay, so this one first is the participant guide for. Uh, working with spark this is a, a series of trainings that we're still kind of in progress turning into an asynchronous course so um so that one basically goes over how you can use spark in the classroom to create a multimedia essay so specifically working with spark now if you're interested in looking at some further portfolio building content we've got that as part of our training on behance which the guide is right here. So and that one um, kind of covers more of the specifics on using portfolios um, and using Behance in, in specific. Um, the great thing about using Behance is that it is specifically oriented toward um, design students. So it is very much like put in a bunch of really beautiful images. It is also its greatest downfall. <laughs> so kind of depending on what sorts of students you're working with. Personally, I would say that Spark or using portfolio, kind of making that jump. I would say Behance is right in that in-between between the two of them. Spark nice. is super simple. Portfolio is a little bit more in-depth. Um, we are working on a training using specifically portfolio, but it is a product that not a lot of people have expressed a whole lot of interest in just yet, mm -hmm. um, just because it is, again, kind of that as you know, if you work with Adobe, sometimes if if you're used to it, easy peasy. If it is brand new, it is absolutely terrifying. <laughs> so no, that's good. These two things will really help. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, if you have any specific questions or anything that comes up, um, please feel free to shoot me a message either on Slack or an email, whatever. I'm always happy to talk with you um, and get things off the ground. So. Great. Thank you, Audra. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. You and Chris and Christine, do either of you two have any questions before we head out today? Awesome. Well, thank you two so much for joining us as well. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your afternoon and uh, hope you have a fantastic, hopefully long weekend too.